You know, so I'm just sitting here uh, walking, taking a walk, thinking about life as I always do. And I had come to realize something. Uh, we must review and analyze every single moment of our waking lives. And the reason why I said this is because of a dream that I had, <laughs> ironically. A dream that I had made me, it's made me reflect on my waking life and how I live it, you know? How, I, how you live your everyday life is very important to analyze and review. Uh, you know, especially if you're more of the impulsive type, you just kind of do whatever it is that you're thinking at the spur of the moment, you know? I used to be like this, you know? I was a, I was an introvert who was also impulsive, you know? And because of this, a lot of people find, would find me unpredictable. They never knew what I was going to do next. I didn't even know what I would do next. I just did whatever I felt like doing. And um, you have to be careful with that. That could definitely cost you. It can cost you money. It could cost you time. It could cost you relationships. Sorry, I had dropped my bag. So, uh, yeah, the dream. I had a dream one time. This is a very old dream. I didn't have this dream recently. I had this dream uh, some years ago, about four or five years ago. Uh, in the dream, uh, I was married. I had a wife and we had a newborn kid. We had a baby girl. She was only like a, a few weeks old, a very, a very new baby. And, um, you know, we were living a pretty happy life together, you know. We had, we had a, a two-bedroom apartment. And um, my mother-in-law, her mom, lived in this apartment with us, you know. And uh, we were getting ready for like a Christmas party. Um, I, I think it was like a, a family gathering at someone else's house. And um, we were all getting, you know, dressed and getting ready to leave and go to this party. But, you know, my wife's mom She's kind of old and slow moving. So we were mostly, we were waiting for her. You know, she was still in her room getting ready. So I looked at, I looked over at my wife and I told her, I said, I'm going to go to the restroom. You know, um, I'm going to freshen up uh, while we're still waiting. Right. Uh, now, uh, this is where things get a little bit complicated and weird, but I'm going to explain this the best way I can. Um, and hopefully in a way that you will understand what I'm talking about. When I walk into the restroom, 
most people have mirrors in their bathrooms, right? When I walked into the bathroom, I looked over to the left at the mirror because the mirror was off to my left as, as soon as you walk into the bathroom. I looked at the mirror and I noticed that my face was different. I was a different person. It was a guy who looked like me, but it wasn't me. You know what I mean? Like he, he looked similar to me, but it wasn't me. Like for example, like the, I have a mole right here. But in this dream that I had, uh, the mold was completely gone. And my hair was much shorter. Um, you know, there were a few other differences too. He didn't look too different from me, but I could tell this wasn't my face. But every, and right at that moment, right at that very moment, I started having flashbacks of my real life. I started having memories of my real life. Because keep in mind, in this dream, where I was married to this woman, I actually had memories with her. I could remember things that I experienced with her. So I started wondering uh, what was real and what was it, man? I'm telling you, this was a really bizarre dream, yo. I started wondering what was real and what wasn't. Because I can remember my life that I had with my wife. I even remember how long we had been together. But I could remember my real life, too. I started having memories when I looked in the mirror. You know, I knew that wasn't me. But at the same time, I thought it was me. And I was, I was like really perplexed. I had washed my hands and I stepped back out of the bathroom. I looked at my wife, I said, are you ready to go? She was like, yeah. Um, her, mom, her mom finally came out of the back room uh, we all walked out the front door. We were getting ready to go to that party. And right at that moment, I woke up. I woke up for the dream. Now, I'm sitting here thinking about this dream, man. And it made me, that dream made me think about another dream that I had. Where, that dream where I, uh, I had got a call from my coworker and she was telling me that I was going to have to find another ride to work because her car had broke down. And then when I woke up from the dream, her car actually did break down. It, yo, listen, man. I'm just going to say there are other dimensions out there. I'm just going to get right to the point. It's, there are definitely other dimensions out there. And uh, heaven and hell is real. Um, it is important to analyze every single moment of your life and how you live your life. You know? What type of life you live in your everyday life will determine what kind of life you live in the afterlife. I mean, in other words, you know, if, you, if you're if you an awful person and you've done a lot of shitty things to people, excuse my language, when you cross over to the afterlife, you either end up in one of the nine circles of hell or you experience your own personal hell. You know, and same thing with heaven. You either, you either go to one of the three heavens or 
You have your own personal heaven. You know? Your own personal heaven might be similar to like a parallel dimension. Who knows, man? But I don't think me having that dream was just a coincidence. I think it had a level of significance to it. Because everything about that life that I was living, I actually believed I was living it, man. I actually believed that I was that person. You know, I started seeing flashbacks of my real life, but I wasn't really, it was more, it was just like, I don't know how to explain it. I was having flashbacks of my real life, but it didn't, it just seemed like, it just seemed like something weird was happening. So I was just seeing weird images. To me, it was just weird images in my head. That life that I was living there with my wife and child was real and that those images in my head wasn't. That's kind of what it felt like, man. I kid you not, yo. There's so much more to this place than um, people realize. You know? There is knowledge out there. There is, there, the, the well is infinite, man. The well is infinite, yo. Like I always tell people, they uh they have a they have a habit of putting the truth into fiction, man. Like I already told you guys before, Eve was the the first person to dive into the rabbit hole. Okay? That was that was the greatest sin that she broke a sacred law. She had access to forbidden knowledge. This is Japanese anime that came out in like in like the nineties, like the late nineties. It's called Inuyasha. The main character, right? Of this, her name is Kagome. She jumped, there was like a well in her garden. <laughs> I keep in mind, like, listen, bro, these people know what they're doing. There was a well um, in the garden of her house. You know, she, uh, she went back into the garden and she sat, I can't remember correctly, I think she sat down on a well or something like that. I haven't watched it in so long. She sat down on a well and she somehow fell inside of the well, okay? And when she fell into the well, she ended up in another dimension. And the dimension was filled with demons. Yo, I be yo, I be trying to tell y'all, bro. These people know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And guess what? She met one demon. She met one particular demon that she fell in love with, and she got married to him. This was basically Satan. The same thing that happened to Lilith. You know. Because you got, yo, listen, man. Uh, there are some people who think that Eve and Lilith are two different people. No, Eve is Lilith. They're the same person. Uh, when she... When she died, when she went into the rabbit hole, she went into the rabbit hole as Eve. When she came back to herself, she came back as Lilith.
Like I said, this is what happens when people tamper with the scriptures. They give out a lot of misinformation on purpose. They leave things out. I mean, they, they even lie. Uh, they don't want you to know yourself. You can only have access to forbidden knowledge right now. But the only way you'll have access to forbidden knowledge is if you, if you serve Lucifer. These people are not going to teach you these things readily, man. If, you, if you've been gifted the gift of sight by the Most High God, then you're going to know these things without anyone telling you. And you will have a lot of enemy. People will be trying to seek you out and find you. They will want to ruin you and destroy your life. I'm telling you, this is exactly how it works. This is why uh, the Most High lets it be known that many are called and few are chosen. Because he has called out to many of us. We are all his children. Okay? He's always calling out to us, man. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, many of us have love of the world. We have, we desire the flesh. We, uh, we desire the flesh more than the afterlife. Um, we've been told that the afterlife doesn't exist. You know, like I said, uh, misinformation, being misled by demonic presences. Now, it's possible that that Japanese character was pushed into a, to the well by unseen spirit. Because basically this is what happened to Eve. The Most High God told her not to go back there and she went back there anyway. And she saw that rabbit hole and she either climbed in on her own or she was pushed in. Either way, either way, it doesn't matter. She came back a, a different person. The Most High God did not recognize her anymore. And guess what? When that Japanese character came back to the other side, her family and friends were telling her that she changed. They were always, they were all saying this about something's different about you, you've changed. They were asking her where she been and stuff like that. And she would lie to them. Oh, I was sick. Oh, I had the flu. Then she would start making excuses and lies. For, for her absence. But she was actually a priestess of hell. She was a hell priestess. Now they didn't actually call her that. In the Japanese anime. <laughs> obviously. But that's what she was. And, yo, listen, this is, this is what actually happens to, with people, man. When these people are delving into witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? When you start asking them questions about why they acting so weird and things like that, what do they do? They lie to you. They make excuses. They're not going to tell you the truth, obviously, right? I mean, what are the chances that you actually believe them even if they did tell you? I went to go, what if they, they're not going to tell you, well, I went to go meet with some demons in hell. 
I could even tell you their names. If you say something like that to the average person, they're going to think you belong in a loony bin. There are forces out there that you do not understand, man. This is why you have to be careful how you play with people, man. You know, you don't want to just be disrespecting people for, for little to no reason or because you think they don't have nothing or they don't have nothing going on in their life that you could just laugh at them, yo. You could be laughing at the wrong person, man. There are things out there you don't understand, man. You know what I mean? If, if this person is a soldier in a most highest kingdom like I am, there are things that I know that you definitely don't want to play with. You don't want to mess around with me, yo. Like I said before, like, there are angels that will protect me. I've met Metatron before. But a lot of people don't know who that is. Like I said before, that's the thing. People think that these things are not real, bro. And I'm telling you it is. You know? And it's the same thing if you, if you serve the forces of darkness. There are demons out there that you've never heard of. You don't know the name of those demons because you never heard of them before. You're more likely to think that they don't even exist. It happens all the time, man. And because of this, this is why many are called and few are chosen, man. Because there are many of us who have spiritual gifts and we don't even know it. And the Most High God gave us free will. So, he cannot just force you to serve in his kingdom. You know, he could deliver you messages through his angels and things like that. He can try. He only thing he can do is try to nudge you in the right direction and get your attention somehow. But he's not going to force you to serve him. That would be slavery. You know what I'm saying? So when people say things like God is evil and stuff like that. Uh, he lets people die. These people are very confused. They don't know what they're talking about. He didn't let these people die. These people killed each other. They had free will, man. They allowed demons to take over them because they enjoy pleasure more than they enjoy wisdom. Unfortunately, a lot of them seek pleasure, bro. And because of this, they end up suffering for eternity. That isn't God's fault. This is why he, he even tells you, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. You know? He taught you the right, he taught you how to be a conductive person, man. Without feeding you a bunch of forbidden knowledge. Without teaching you the dark arts. You don't need those things, man. So. As I've already stated, man. Uh, you have free will. You have the freedom to choose, man. You know. You have, you have the freedom and cho to choose. Only a few are chosen because only a few chose the right path, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So, you have some reflecting to do. Think about each moment of your life and how you live it. Facebook is not the news. It's not the daily news. It's not the daily newspaper. Instagram is not the daily newspaper. 
How do you, you make the news yourself about your life? How do you want to be reported in the book of life? How do you want your story recorded, man? You have to really think about that, man. This is why it's important to analyze each moment of your life. Think about each and every move that you make in every second of the day. You want, you want them to get it right, man. You don't want to look at these things you say and say, you've done and say, no, I did not do these things. And most guys are going to show you, oh, look, I've got it right here. Yeah, that was you, bro. Nobody's lying on you. This is what you recorded. You cannot even say that I'm lying on you. This is recorded by you. You understand what I'm saying? So, peace, y'all. I hope you understand, yo. I hope you hear what I really hear what I'm saying to you. Because all of these things are important to analyze. Okay?